The NAC have delivered a series of three workshops in St Vincent from 2017 to 2020. This summary clip is from the final workshop discussing future needs following the earlier technical consultation and training sessions. St Vincent is a small island developing state. A lot of our economic activity is around the coast. We're trying to focus on um, the blue economy and blue diplomacy. And so the management of the coast and the marine environment is substantially important for that. And the Grenadines themselves, they're basically um, all coastal. Uh, you have um, some developments taking place on the hilly mountainous um, sections of the, of the Grenadine Islands, but predominantly they are fishing communities that also have a, a wide tourist base. So they cater a lot to tourism. So it is very important that we, we protect our uh, coastal regions. One of the, we are one of the regions that are mostly affected by the effects of climate change. Um, we're seeing um, losses in our beaches, in our um, coral reefs, which are needed for our um, marine habitat. So the management of um, our well, course is critical for us living in, in this region, in the tropics. Well, currently we don't have an uh, integrated coastal zone management policy in place. Um, it has been drafted, I understand, or is in the drafting phase. And as such, um, we don't have a unit to be the one designated to manage the, the coastal zone. Things like transport, how you move around, be using the sea, uh, be it a coastal roads as most of our infrastructure is right on the sea. You know, it is important that we look at what we have but also try to project into the future and how we can safeguard these things for us and make them as safe or as resilient as possible for, you know, our children and grandchildren and for the general well-being of the country. It is best to work with nature than against it. At times, um, you may have to put in a few hard engineering structures. Yes, that is true. Um, some en energetic environments just require it to be done to safeguard the infrastructure that is close to the sea. However, where it is possible, you try to incorporate um, natural solutions. So uh, sustaining the coral reefs, I should say. Um, ensuring that you have mangroves and it's a he healthy mangrove habitat as well uh, those will help because those provide buffer zones if you have um, sandy beaches those are a buffer zone to the elements that are offshore so once upon a time there used to be mining of sand there but that has been completely out and you're still seeing the depletion of the beaches taking place so we definitely need some investigation to take place along that line to find out exactly what is taking place there and causing all this um, beach erosion from taking place. As you drive along the road, sometimes you would notice that um, they would have caution signs and so forth because the road is being undermined by um, wave activity and ocean activity underneath undermines the road. So because of that, you're um, having less area of, of the road to actually use. So for us at Fisheries, we are interested in models that will be able to help us to analyze ocean acidification, why we are not seeing the amount of fish species like what we are used to from before. So we are seeing a reduction in fish species, fish abundance. We are seeing the impacts of a lately of sargasm alongside our coast. We are seeing degradation of our coral reefs. So models that will be able to help us to track whether it is flooding, um, ocean acidification, fish abundance, we are very much inclined to such data. Some of the products that were shown in this project would be really beneficial to us, such as things like sargassum tracking, which, yes, we would have had sargassum before, but with the climate change, it seems that it's really been exacerbated and those impacts on, you know, livelihoods and the fisheries sector 
especially, and also tourism within our countries. Uh, like, really interested in how models, you know, how useful they are in predicting future activities. Um, I think that'll be particular of interest in this time where we're moving towards having a new port, having uh, other coastal developments like hotels and stuff like that. Um, so I thought that stuff's pretty cool where you can see what a hurricane might do, um, how, you know, it might in fact flooding. I thought, I think that the aspect is pretty interesting. Change in the sea level rise will affect infrastructure, roads and all that. So modeling is important so that you could have a baseline idea of how the sea level is at a particular time or this, how the sea level is during regular operations. We'd like to collect data that can capture um, the currents, the um, currents and tides of our beaches. At some of our beaches we have noticed that there, it's, it changes seasonally, but that information will be very useful in terms of our analysis of the... We are a coastal um, country. We're very small. We don't have a lot of air, um, space to retreat to, so we definitely need to protect what we have.